Did you order your art print yet? Not yet. I've been wanting to to, to, to get a copy of that. It's uh, fascinating. It would look, it would look $40. Hang- yeah. 40 bucks. It'll look good hanging over your fireplace. PayPal. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, you know, I'd have to take the TV down, but I think it'd be worth it. I think I could lay there by the fireplace and you look at that for hours. talk about a conversation starter. Well, since our last <laughs> podcast, we were talking about the Epstein um, debacle. Um, a picture came out, and it was a picture of Bill Clinton sitting in a lounge chair. Right. Pointing at whoever was up front of him wearing red shoes and a, looked like a Monica, Monica Lewinsky, Lewinsky dress, dress is what it was. Yeah, and it was it, 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 the complete name of with it, stain. I think that yeah. was hilarious when you told me that last time. <laughs> I night. know it, it's funny because it, this was a commissioned piece of art that Epstein had done yeah. by an artist, but they had a name for it. I, I, Parsing Bill, Parsing <laughs> Bill. Which yeah, I, the first thing I yeah. thought about when I saw it was like devil in a blue dress. What the fuck do you mean Parsing Bill? Yeah. That sounds like an NC seventeen that movie that was made in France. Yeah, it, and it could. <laughs> be it could be i imagine there might be video footage to go with this picture you know that's the thing i'm shocked we haven't seen because you see you see pictures of clinton at all these events with porn stars around him. yeah now trump has the same thing he does he does i mean they all do so you know he bangs stormy daniels so, we all know that so, so people look <laughs> when you're a rich dude and you have money everybody wants to be the next wife right or the next mistress don't don't even start the bullshit with us about oh they were victims they yeah. knew what they were doing when they showed oh, up yeah. There. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. that is such horse shit yeah you know so you know and, and it's funny because you know we, we were talking about the artist earlier and and you know there's a, there's a these people are amazing they're very ritualistic in my opinion you got the Podesta artist? yeah no the people that collect art of the deviant things like that well, is the they artist say art alive? imitates life it, it so does. I mean yeah. is the artist still alive you know that's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> he's 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 laying next to the judge. It's like a yeah. page page six thing. <laughs> yeah, you know it's it's funny because it's a local artist that's done other artwork like that before. New York guy, you know. But yeah. it's it's when you when you look at connections like the skulls and bones and the sex clubs and all the stuff like that. There's always you don't the public doesn't have access to the homes, so right. you don't open the doors and see the weird shit hanging it's, in there. Well, especially when like uh, Better Homes and Gardens comes in and photographs their sure. homes, you know all that stuff comes down, oh, of course. <laughs> or they don't take it's pictures like, of it. Oh my god, dude, how many dogs do you have? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but but all, I mean, the, all the leather leashes and yes. shit hanging on the walls. <laughs> it's funny because the the access. So what ended up happening was they were um, they were in Podesta's townhome yeah. in Manhattan. And there was a lady journalist that was there, and she took this picture. This picture was at the as you walk in the front door, and there's a stairway. Right at the very top, there's that picture of him pointing back at you at the door. Yeah. And then they were saying that, and this lady didn't take a picture of it. They're saying there was a full size mannequin hanging from the ceiling in a wedding dress. Wow. At the top of the stairs as well. You know that's some messed up stuff. And all these guys, mm-hmm. again, going back to it. They all hang around. They all hang around and imitate the same art. Look at Podesta. Sure. And all the all the rumors that have come out about Podesta and his activities and the weirdness. That, remember, it was about a year and a half, two years ago. It was right when the Clinton emails got it oh, released, yeah. and all his deviant side came out about who he hung out with and yeah. the parties they went to. Well, they got hold of some of his art. That's also about the same time that this painting came out, mm-hmm. and it's a bunch of. Man, for lack of a better term, it's child predatory looking stuff. Yeah. It's a bunch of really. Oh yeah. yeah, it's a bunch of bound girls in a in a. Uh, it's like a tiled room with with these girls that are bound with their dresses pulled up. It's 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 bizarre. It's some sick stuff. And this is Podesta's personal artist. And he all buys this, from this guy. All this started from just a friend request. On Exa- exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you know. You know, you? you know why you're laughing. You know why you're laughing. You know. You know. Craigslist that shit. <laughs> Yeah, artists wanted to paint porn of kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, <laughs> dude, it's I mean, it's it's messed up. It's some sick stuff, and these guys all seem to have the mm-hmm. same thing in common. They all run in this circle. Yeah, they all have the same art. At what point do you look at that and say, you know, I'm drawing a conclusion here. You know, you like you either like this stuff or you don't. I look at car, I look at, at pictures of cars and stuff like that because I like that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. I can't. I mean, so we all know what my page is like you mm-hmm. know, on, yeah. the, on the downs or mm-hmm. on the low low, but the I can't even fathom having the mindset that these guys, at least how it's described in the news, that some of the deviant shit that me, it's like having a beer, you know, maybe having oh. some off color talk. Yeah, this here where you plan events around, you know. 
a type of slavery or an auction or you know yeah. just ca- some sort of domination. Well, it's exciting. That to is crazy. But to it's me. also, but it's also part of a ritualistic community. It Think is. About well, yeah, I, I get that because what ends up happening these parties, these social parties. Let's take the blackface parties for example. Yeah. You know that whole thing is legit. That shit happens. That, oh yeah. That typically. Um, that's a bunch of rich people with nothing better to do than to do stupid shit like that. Think about what they do in college. Right. When you look at the skulls and bones and you look at all these other fraternal and sororities that these people are in, we all know the leadership of those. Th- there's some real shitheads. Yeah. They'll make you do some debased, deviant shit. And then record it. And then, yeah, and then use it against <laughs> yeah, you in your political nowadays, career yeah. down the road. Exactly. You know, so there's how, there's how people, they want in. So they get in behind the curtain. Right. And then once they get in behind the curtain, everybody's a bitch when they first start. Everybody starts out as a bitch, and you work your way up the bitch ladder. Well, speaking of bitches, we had Chris Kumo pop up this this weekend. Chris yeah. Kumo, Chris Kumo, how you say his name. We call him Fredo. Yeah. Fredo. Chris, Chris, Chris Cujo is the one I heard he's, was the best. He's, uh, he's bitch of the week for sure. Did you see that video so, of him freaking so, out? So the meltdown about the whole Fredo thing, you know what I think is interesting is how how fast that escalated yeah for a dude that sits up front of a camera and scolds people all day for their behavior yeah he his the cheese slid off that yeah dude he went from zero to fucked up in like three seconds very threatening i mean honestly i I mean i told you down the stairs well yeah i mean he was like i'm ready to jump you you know it's like dude I'd have, I'd have straight armed him. I got to be honest with you. I'd have punched him. Well, in the here's throat. The, and here's the thing. Here's the thing I learned growing up fighting as a kid. You know, mm-hmm. when you ever got in fights, it's always the ones that talked that sure. were really scared to actually really fight. Sure. Right. If you just hit him first, yeah. it was generally all over with. And yeah. that's what this guy reminded me. of. I think he, he wanted talking. to do to hit him so he can say, "Look, a Trump supporter hit me." I think right. you're right. I really. Think I think that's that was, was looking for a story. He was looking for that story, and you know, and when you are the editor, yeah. Of your own story, yeah. You can spin that shit any way you want. That's why. That's what makes what that asshole did wrong. Exactly. Well, you know? that tells you yeah. his integrity as a journal, quote air yeah. fingers well, journalist. And, and so, and that's the, that's the other thing. How does he? Is it because of his relatives? Is is it who he's related to? Yeah. That he gets yeah, these he's jobs. Pretty, he's pretty connected to some. I you mean, think? Like what Mar? It was yeah, Mario yeah. Or, oh yeah. You know, another fucking douchebag. Dude, you, you know the one thing I would say to anybody. I always tell people when you buy food, read the label. Yeah. When you look at somebody that you look up to or are looking at, read their pedigree too. Right. You know, I mean, you got Anderson Cooper as part of the Vanderbilts. You got you got Kumo part of that dynasty. You've got Chuck Schumer's niece oh, yeah. running around acting like an idiot. Uh, uh, you have all this. You have all these people that get a favorable mouthpiece from well, look, a press that hates what we do. It's what they're going for. I mean, look at the current crop of Democrats mm-hmm. that are running for office. Sure. Most of them know that they're not going to make it. So they're gunning for their jobs. They're gunning for they're gunning for news media positions. They're gunning for talk show Well, hosts. they want the sound bite for sure. Yeah, they yeah. are. And that, it's yeah. they're, but they're looking for the job outside of not being president. Mm-hmm. That's my point. Sure. And that these this it all runs together. It goes back to the same thing we were sure. just talking about. These circles all intermix with each other. Mm-hmm. And that's how this narrative gets spun. That's how it's so easy. That's how it's so fluid mm-hmm. when they they all know what the other one wants said you know and it, what's funny about you know i've seen this at all levels of um of business once you reach a certain point there's a certain way you're supposed to act and respond right you're not supposed right. to right that's what i was driving yeah. at yeah you're not supposed to get personal you're not supposed to get emotional and when somebody does have that you just ignore it like it never happened right and you just move forward and so you see a lot of bad behavior going unchecked it literally is unchecked. I mean, you know, CNN is protecting this guy like crazy. Well, it CNN. proves the elitist. It, it proves yeah. the elitist mindset for sure. CNN yeah. has had like uh, just numerous oh uh, dude. incidences. It's fun watching those assholes melt down because they're not even responding to any of that yeah. stuff. Oh right no, now. no, it's not even. It's not even yeah. on their radar. They yeah. don't report on it. They don't show it. I mean, yeah, it's fun to watch though. I mean, so. <laughs> So my favorite one oh, is, Jesus. is uh, uh, this guy here. I mean, uh, you know. Don Lemon. Don yeah, Lemon, the racist president. The Lemon Sanchez. <laughs> God. <laughs> so apparently it's alleged now that there was a bartender in the Hamptons mm-hmm. and they got into a very heated argument about something it was a negotiation yeah that's yeah. yeah so that's that's <laughs> kind of yeah that's kind of where it sounds like to me this is kind of a that's how i tell the story no they are denying this they are denying that this ever happened the, the don lemon story yeah okay but um so apparently he gets into this altercation with the bartender and 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 lemon reaches 
breaches down in his pants. Allegedly. Allegedly. Okay. And if he has a dick, he was touching it. Okay. So he was doing that. Then he rubbed further back. His taint. His yeah, and so he rubbed the wow. took his fingers and he stuck, fish hooked. Yeah, stuck it under the gun. <laughs> I love Graham's play by play in here. This is awesome. He's, he's like the Howard Cosell of Dirty yeah. Deeds. Or the and Harry, now he's fish hooking. Or the Harry Carey for sure. He Got, could go off the, the way. way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. So he rubs it in the guy's mustache and oh, he said, is, I it, your fingers. is it P or D? Is what he asked him. Is it yeah. P or D? And I'm like, and that was where it got. That's where the story ended. There wasn't much said after that. I mean, literally rubbed it in the guy's mustache. Yeah, so see that? It's like a, it's like a it's like a to go, you know. But how do you let somebody get that close to you? See, I, would I would never know. let anybody breaking a, break a bottle. Yeah, and and, and, and yeah. To, to take a phrase from the the uh, from the clerks too. <laughs> <laughs> knife. It's a it's a knife. Yeah, exactly. that's how that shit's gonna end. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I would never. I don't care how big you are. If you're gonna beat the hell out of me afterwards, I'm right. not gonna let no. you do that to yeah. me. You can beat the hell out of me all you want afterwards. You're not touching me. Well, <laughs> when you think about it, that's. I mean, I call it bioterrorism. Yeah. To me, you don't know what kind of. Sh- I, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, it's easy for me to hate on this dude because he's an idiot. Yeah. He really is an idiot. I mean, the guy. He's well, just after, a, after after his little spiel at the at the at the DNC, yeah, uh, and he called ever uh, the racist president, yeah, which is just give so me a break. stupid. But uh, you know, so mm. we'll we'll see where this goes. I, I'm going to watch it because I want to see if it disappears. Yeah, I'm I'm I, I probably tend not to believe that one because any I don't know of any dude anywhere that would let them stick their fingers in their mustache. Well, if you don't see it coming, yeah, though. that's true. And now those two incidents Maybe alone, so. those two incidents right. alone. <laughs> The way I look at it is, if you if you're looking at just <laughs> what's going on out in these protests, yeah, well, you've got people doing stupid shit oh, all the time. It's the worst. So yeah. basically, you're modeling yourself after the people yeah. you're fucking covering, right? You know, because <laughs> the you know the guys that are throwing like frozen fucking milkshakes at people and shit okay. like that. So you remember in Californication, uh, Hank's son shows up, <laughs> Levon, and he yes. gets in a fight with one of the movie producers, and he sticks his and he gets stink finger. Yes, he goes back and gets stink finger. Oh. Yeah, and he reaches out and he that's gets, his that's his that's move. his signature yeah. move. <laughs> it's terrible. And so I, I'm just picturing this dude doing this in public. Now it's got to be a dark bar. And to your point, not seeing it coming. Maybe he was reaching for a tip. Who knows? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I go. mean, you know, it's it's so bizarre. This is the most obscene, vile, bizarre things I think I've heard of somebody doing in a long time. Mm-hmm. But it is bleeding over in society like oh, Sam's sure talking is. about. Because sure. look, at, look at Philadelphia. You know, you had sure. these six cops mm-hmm. that were wounded t- trying to take out a drug dealer. Mm-hmm. They'd, gone, they'd gone into the house, arrested some people. Right. And this guy barricades himself in upstairs, shoots six cops. Luckily, they're all okay. They all, I heard on the news last night, they all sure. exited the same day. Mm-hmm. So thank God for the police that they sure. weren't really hurt. Um, but you have these protests break out outside, and they're, they're, you've got mobs. While this action's going on, you've got this guy barricaded. You've got mobs in the street. They're throwing bottles and rocks and stuff at cops that are there trying to protect the same... I mean, this stuff, it's from un- both sides, it, from both sides. Yeah. It's unbelievable, you know, and it's in, and, and this is, this is goes back to these people are going to emulate exactly what the Don Lemons and Chris Cuomo's tell them to do. Sure. And, and that's the sad thing about society is where civil disruption and civil disorder is promoted it is. by, by the so-called media. And it, it is funny because if it went the other way, right, if it went the other way, I think the funniest thing I can recall is when the Texas nationalist movement was going to stage a Second Amendment uh, march in the city of Austin last year. Right. They're going to do it at the Capitol. Yeah, they're right? going to do it at the Capitol. They were going to do it at the state Capitol. They applied for all their paperwork, right? But what they did at last minute, because they heard Antifa was going to show up, they canceled it. Yeah. But didn't say anything on social media. Right. And just let them go. So you had all, you had like 150, 200 Antifa supporting clowns show up at the Capitol with nobody to fight with. Yeah. They ended up getting in altercations with the Department with the of DPS. Public Safety. Yeah, DPS and, was and, out there. And, the, and the, we call them the palace guards, the guys <laughs> protecting the Capitol. Yeah. And what was funny is it was like a whole bunch of these snotty punk rich kids Oh yeah, were arrested because they didn't have anybody to fight with, so they turned on the cops. Yeah. 
And then now we have people shooting into the ice offices. You do. You had a whole string Fire of Fire bombing. Well, and these are all people that are fired up by people that follow hate speech from the AOCs of the world. Exactly. Because yeah. that Kamala, is... Kamala, that Kamala is, Harris. Kamala Harris. I mean, yeah. That's all hate speech. To tangent off of your comment about these guys, uh, these protesters and shit, mm-hmm. following, you know, sort of the... If, if they follow Como or, or, or Don Lemon's uh-huh. uh, newscast... Train of thought, yeah. ...is you're kind of getting to a point where you could almost say there's it's almost like borderline sedition yeah it is it is they're inciting somebody to make an act Mm -hmm. that wouldn't have occurred had they not been paying attention to or listening to this person's uh rhetoric Mm -hmm. when he's on tv so that's that's kind of a real shaky ground where you know how do you determine between you know what was what role did that that personality play uh-huh. versus you know what was what was what's free what speech and what is sedition yeah, yeah. is what yeah. you're getting at i yeah. think right is that right am That's i understanding it, that well, question right no it's just i i actually want to i want to hold comos and lemons feet closer to the fire than that currently okay think well, they are so, right now, so. so here's the thing you're right because a lot of employers because somebody would make a statement say that was considered racial they would be fired right and they would lose their job yet these guys haven't and they, yeah, yeah, and they 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 won't. I mean, yeah. it's they've said. I mean, how long has this been going on now? At least the, the two oh, years forever. of this president. Well, and so then, any part any part of a psychological warfare that's played on anybody is going to be done through the media. Exactly. But if you can't demonstrate a reason why they need to get rid of somebody, then I wouldn't. I I actually wouldn't rubbing get rid your of balls and your no, tank no, no. Well, and I, rubbing in a dude's face would get anybody fired. I understand, but it's a story. Is what I'm is what I I'm saying. I hear you. I hear you. And that that's all I'm saying is yeah. if it's only a story. Well, I don't know what bar you go to, but I ain't going to bar. That... <laughs> well, no. <laughs> but what yeah. I'm saying, I don't is want to drink that. Yeah, me neither. If he's still a money maker for him, okay, they're not going to get rid of him. I until, see what you're saying. So until that is becomes... exactly what's wrong with everybody. But you're yes. exactly right because yes. we have athletes doing the same thing. Because you can people oh, yeah. can no, say you're right all there. kinds of shit. Yeah. But until you prove, and then suddenly they're they're their stock takes a dip yeah. or somebody from high up uh, up on high says that so, fucking acts that dude so yeah. on your on that vein of thought i have seen that in the business world and it does happen we've yeah. all seen it happen in the business world where sure. you have a high producer that basically can get away with basically murder right the beauty of it is though is they remember that crap when he stops producing 10 years down the road and say well you remember when you did this we're yeah. gonna let you yeah. go now we hope so anyway yeah. well and that is usually people that do shit like that have shit on other people they do that's and true that's the thing and that you gotta worry it about it never goes away you know it, it's funny because so this whole aftermath with the philadelphia thing you have the mayor or is it the mayor that comes out and says it's the nra's fault yeah the, yeah. the mayor the mayor blamed the mayor of philadelphia blamed the nra for the drug dealer that shot the cops right and then the police chief comes out and does a press conference and says well, this guy should have never been in public he should have been in jail S- right. say that again yeah say that again the mayor yeah. blamed the nra for the drug dealer shooting the cops, cops in, <laughs> in philadelphia in philadelphia <laughs> I know, right? That's, that's some logic. <laughs> no, that's, How do you make that his logic words. train run? <laughs> his words. You know, and, and so, yeah, it's the NRA's fault for, for all these crimes. <clears throat> you know, and, and what I think is really sad about it is the NRA is going through a big shuffle right now. Yeah. There's a lot of people resigning. There's So what the, the pressure, so I heard a really good podcast the other day talking about those pressures. And they were saying that the Democrats have two main goals in, in their sight to help crack whatever the Trumpers believe in. Right. One is to break up the NRA and blame everything on the NRA. And two is to turn the state of Texas blue. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, yeah. That's their, that was their yeah, two, that was their goal. two, two goal, ultimate goals because we have 38 electoral votes right. and, and all the stuff that the state stands for. And so you're going to see an onslaught of that. So, you know, I, this isn't about red flag. We're not doing a whole thing on red flag. I get that, but it's a part of this discussion because now you've got, Buzzwords. We talked about buzzword bingo, I think, last pod, two podcasts ago about how we can sit back and just start checking off all the buzzwords that the media uses to implant in the people's psyche when it yeah. comes to thinking about things. Well, you've got you've got Kamala Harris. There's two two sides of this coin here. You got Kamala Harris that that talks about the uh, domestic terrorism. Yeah, she basically came in and, and said, "Here's." She was given an interview, mm-hmm. and in the interview, she stated that we need to start looking strongly. At domestic terrorists through speech and other media, yeah. 
and and following these people. And if, if they're it, not right, if they're not right, so changing, that's yeah, exactly def- what she so said. Changing yeah. the definition, yeah. Yeah. exactly. So she wants to redefine it. So what I think is funny. So she used the red flag law. She did. So President Trump said the same of Chris Cuomo. The he guy did. is a madman. He's nuts. Should he be have a gun? Should red flag be used against him? Exactly. So both cases coming from both sides of the fence are wrong. They, they make the argument for not for enacting. Not, for not doing that. Because basically becomes, violating due process. Yeah, you're weaponizing you're weaponizing something. Well, you're, you're weaponizing a law mm-hmm. to affect political thought. That's yeah. exactly what they're talking about. Doing yeah. both sides of them. Well, just free thought. Not, it, not yeah. any thought. Yes. Really, yeah. And I and I can't for, I can't remember what clown was up there saying that Trump is fundamentally redesigning America. Okay, remember that? that yeah, idiot got I'm up? trying to think who said that. So here's that. what I think is funny. While you're thinking about who said that, what I think is funny is you had a president run 10 years ago on that, fundamentally changing America. <laughs> right. That was his whole campaign. Hope and change. Hope, Hope and, change. and change. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know, how do you, I mean, this is the absurdity How esoteric of these people. can you get? Exactly. exactly. And so you have that. So you have all this speech going on now. And what I think is funny is that um, we have protesters in Hong Kong. Yeah, you do. And they're waving the American flag of all things. And singing I was, the man, I was national like, anthem. Dude, that was awesome. I was looking at those people going, Come on. If we want to if we wanna if yeah. we want immigrants, let's take them. I'll take every one of them that want to come. Well, I think we should take all of the Antifa and all the socialists that don't and send them to accommodate them on a free trip to the socialist mm-hmm. country. China is fixing to make that place yeah. What if yeah. what if China became the fifty first state? <laughs> oh man, that would be funny. <laughs> that would be funny. But no, I'm serious. Let's yeah. let's take we'll take Hong Kong. We'll take all the people from Hong yeah. Kong. You can have all of our communists and it evens itself out. Everybody's happy. They should be happy because they'll have socialism. Now. Exactly. And we'll get some freedom loving folks here that are immigrants. <laughs> I think and I'm all funny. for it. So you know Chuck Woolery, he has a he has a podcast that he, he has, but years ago he did um Save Us Chuck uh, videos on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And those. he had remember he had the uh, Citizens Exchange program. Yes. Where we trade um one of ours for two of theirs, right? And that way we can, you know, kind of even even it out. And that way, people that don't want to work here, yeah, we'll just send them over there and bring people you that really do want to work here. Yeah, because you know it's it's funny. It's easy to be identified. This is one of our uh, big talking points: is we don't like to be identified or classified by anybody. We'll tell you straight up: immigration is a wonderful thing. That's how this country was founded sure. legally. Everybody comes through a legal port. And you have to have substance, and you have to have the ability to support yourself. Right. That's why immigration works. Well, but, w- but when you open it up and just let anybody in, because we had to create a policy when yeah. nefarious thought started, yeah, popping up yep. around the country. Where you're, okay, now we do, we have to be a little bit more selective about yeah. who we let in. Sure. Here. Well, yeah. When you look at the building of America, where you had Chinese labor and you had yeah. all these things, yeah, you had to you had to at some point. Say okay, they're going to well, be here want, now. They're going to go home. You want strong people, you know exactly, what I mean? Yeah. So, so let's even let's look at that even from just natural a nature perspective, Graham. You were talking about a study. He that has you a looked haiku. At. I think he I think did. he's writing a haiku on. I it. think he was too. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you you were looking at that scientific study about trees and wind, and well, it was it was an interesting he, analogy that yeah, leads it was, right into this. I happened to you know I I read everything. Zen. I read everything but the shit y'all were looking at. Right. But, yeah. but the thing was is because That's I, nothing. New. Because I pay attention to social media probably more than I probably should. Right. But I, I see the the kind of the, the thoughts of people in there. Anyway, this it was this study that these it was a biological study, these scientists were raising trees in like a biosphere or whatever. And I guess when the trees grew to <laughs> Polly Shore, yeah, hey buddy, hey, hey buddy, um, <laughs> don't wheeze in that don't don't the juice. That juice. There's a Baldwin kid too, wasn't so, there? So yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so they were growing these trees, and they focused on these trees in particular. Is I guess once these trees reached a certain uh, grow, uh, height growth, um, they were they were falling over. So couldn't I support guess, their own weight. Yeah. So I guess dur- when they when they go back and reverse engineer to figure out what aspects are missing in our biosphere that you find in nature, wind was the was the was the the thing that they narrowed it down to because wind resistance it, struggle yes, because it, it it forces the tree to build tensile well, strength to withstand movement from and it all makes directions. the root system uh, yes. a lot more prolific. Yeah, it, well, and yeah. it also tells yeah. the root system. Mm how to freaking grow to sure. to overcome the obstacles yeah. above so with that i took 
that just that whole theory and related it to what's going on in social media or just in society, society in, in general, general man is right the fact that that people want to be or there's a certain mindset that only wants to be fed information a certain way and they can't withstand an opposing view you know where, wherever that view comes from whether it's conservative or or hell vice versa you, you'll have people who are conservative that react in the very same way that somebody who's progressive reacts no, I, so. I, I agree with that you know think about it this way look at intellectuals versus blue collar you got to remember what america is about america is about blue collar hard-working yeah industrious thought it's all it's it's basically get your hands dirty and you can make your own living we're being invaded by tech and we're being invaded by esoterical intellectuals theory. you're being a lot of theory, theory right yes so take the impossible burger for example oh uh, my god so you have a, a group of scientists that are highly intelligent highly intelligent and taking your theory about the tree about what mother nature knows about root structure and building strength and character and sure. integrity for the tree to live uh -huh. so it can grow right take take the guys that are making a burger now that's made all from synthetic material they use organic material but it's all synthesized it's right. all synthesized soy like green yeah soy like green <laughs> exactly their whole argument is animals pollute the world and we're trying to save the world from these animals. So the animals are the enemy. Yeah. So that's, we should eat them. Which we should shoot them. Ex oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so we live in a society where that that brain cell that that one gap between lunacy and yeah. logic yeah is completely yes. gone. Yeah. Because you have. I mean. I know this is a joke, but we were laughing about this earlier. So Duffel Blog is something we like to read a lot. Yeah. And so we were reading about this moolah that was complaining that it's hard <laughs> to recruit jihadis now because they're too soft because they're listening In to... In Kandahar of all yeah, places. Of all places. Which I thought was funny as yeah. shit. Yeah. So <laughs> according to the article, and like I said, take it for what it is. We found it very humorous. We were laughing. Is that the moolah was saying that, well, the problem with the, with the youth today is they're all hooked on social media. And they're not as willing to strap on a blow, a blow up vest <laughs> as they used to be. <laughs> they're too fat. They're too fat to fit in there because they're, they're sitting fat. around reading reading social, Read social media. media and eating Krispy Kreme donuts all day. <laughs> and and what's really funny too is when they do so they're upset because their recruiting campaign isn't working. Right. They're taking selfies before they hit yeah. the detonate button. There you go. The whole <laughs> the, <laughs> the whole recruitment process is social media for them. And they're saying the problem is is we get we reach a lot of people we just don't get members to join and so they the ones they do get there are out of shape and very soft and they usually want more hash or more or more opium yes you know and yeah. and they're willing to not push that button i i was i laughed my ass off when i saw that i was like dude that is funny but look at what's happening to kids today yeah Hey, they're living in the biodome of thought processes. They are, for sure. But let's talk about a couple more things regarding these kids nowadays. So now, I saw a video this morning. You shared a video that had kids on their bicycles riding through a store in uh, Great Britain. What? It was it was a gang of kids. It's that it's I wasn't that drinking this morning. I don't no, it was a bike video page. At all. It was a bike page that we follow. Oh, okay. 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 And and it was something you shared, and it led me to this other video. Ah. So these six kids run their bikes, and they're in the UK, and they just decided we're going to go ride through a store and terrorize everybody. Okay. So they get on their bikes and they start terrorizing everybody, doing wheelies and and they're videoing this whole thing with GoPros. Okay. And so they're going through there and Pretty they're knocking. Brazen. What, what's that? Pretty brazen. Very brazen until this little old lady gets a hold of one of them. <laughs> <laughs> this little old lady jerks this kid's bike and he falls off his bike and he gets up and hits her. Oh wow! He hits her. I mean, literally. And then she backs off and they get on their bikes and they ride through the store, and they went. They left the store, and this is they have it all on video, and they post it on social media. Of course. This is, this is what's wrong with these people nowadays. So he posts a video of the six of them riding through the streets, pulling wheelies and running up front of cars, slashing at people with razor blades wow. as they're riding by. Oh, shit. Yeah. And, you know, so, and, 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 and they're laughing about it. They think this shit is funny. Right. You know, so we have, we have all this. You talk about kids not getting tough a good smack to the back of the head would have fixed a lot of that shit yeah so one guy finally had enough and you can tell he's been in a pub all morning 
<laughs> he had a he got so, out he started and i don't understand half what they're saying because i don't know what they say when they're yeah, drunk over there right but he jerked this one kid off his bike and he was fighting five other dudes wow yeah it got pretty interesting but we we're starting to see a little more of that here now with people don't give a shit yeah i mean we had a kid that just got killed the other day over off of one of the streets down here showing out riding a wheelie weaving through traffic cutting people off yeah and he hit a pole and killed him wow right there in front of the bailey's restaurant right across from the heb over there and that dude laid in the street for three what hours kind of bicycle or motorcycle? motorcycle oh okay little motorcycle doing that same kind Fucking of shit thin yeah. that herd man running Fucking through thin the crowds. That herd. so we have all these kids doing this stuff and then we got kids walking into buildings now that are on un- and they know what they're doing when they go to these buildings oh yeah they walk in there on you know they know it's unprotected and they think they're gonna go pull off some kind of mass shooting and walk away from it right and and, and there and it's so weird how these people because there's no there's scuffing up we talked about scuffing up before there's no scuffing up of these kids anymore yeah you watch little kids screaming at their parents in a grocery store because they don't get a toy yeah I'm like dude i'd have got no. my ass so beat i yeah. would actually equate the scuffing up that you're just talking about mm-hmm. to the fucking wind yes exactly yes. yeah that's what got me That's thinking what, you want to make not don't make dumb decisions I, I encountered a lot of wind when I was growing yeah, up. That's exactly. how, that's how I Well, there's no such that. thing as a fair weather life, it, is, the, is the whole the fact behind it. Right. And hard times are supposed to build character. We're not building kids with character anymore. No. We're coddling too many of them. And, and we're giving them excuses. Between, and a lot of times where I, I wonder if social media is the, is the goal, is I'm going to do an event that mm-hmm. I can capture so I can post it because that's I'm crazy enough. I mean. And that that's the, to me, that's the crazy part. Right. Is, okay, like, you know that I'm rolling around with the freaking new dash cam, which I right. fucking love. Mm-hmm. That, that video and, and picture quality is really, like, it really good. It looks good, yeah. Uh-huh. But the, you know, you have people who, who live just to, ca- this is my content catcher and I'm going to put it here and somehow or another that, gives you value in some fucking well, which but i don't even yeah, fucking understand that's a good way to put it because selfies are the same thing it, it basically is look at me here i am I, i'm not going to mention names but we were at a funeral <laughs> no i'm so, i'm sorry we were visiting a gravesite. yeah well what and, and wasn't me and Again, one yeah I'm no alive. it wasn't any of us but it was somebody i know <laughs> right and so we're there tending to the graves and this person is off there doing their hair taking wow. selfies of themselves at the gravesite. at the graveyard yeah and i'm like Dude, that That's is bizarre. like, that is like <laughs> That's so self absorbed. Yeah. Dude. I mean, so when we go to lunch, I take pictures of food and I write about them. Sure. Or we'll take a picture of a building or something that says, hey, we've been here, let's try this. Or you, you see something yeah. that is unique enough to want to mm-hmm. capture it. You know, whether right. that's good or bad, you know, you have your an opinion one way. Well, I post a lot of pictures of our dog because a lot of people ask about our dog. Right. So, I mean, I'll put, because you know what's funny? I mean, social media is, is really kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah. It really is. I mean, when you get up in the morning and you start looking at it, it's going to ruin your day. Every time. You know, and how many times is it true? Hardly ever. Yeah. So, you know, so for me, I just look at it as, you know, I, I jump on Twitter a lot more than I ever have now just because I'm reading all the lunacy from Graham, these, Graham sucks you in. Yeah. These. Well, what's funny about <laughs> what's funny about it is um, actually uh, Lawyer Joe started me on it four yeah, years ago. Lawyer, yeah, because yeah, I, yeah. I see him pop up on my, on my all, feed all, all the time. All the time. And so it's funny. I saw it. I try to play on there, but I really don't want to put much of a digital footprint with what I think on there. Yeah. I mean, we're doing a big footprint right here. It's enough for me. Yeah. You know, but to sit there and put it in writing, I'm not going to do very much of that. But, you know, I sit there and I look at these kids and I and I look at some of the shit they say and do and they think it's funny. And there's just something basically wrong with that. So maybe we need a little more wind in our lives or their lives. Maybe the parents need to quit blocking that shit. Yep. And let these kids experience a little bit of a hard time because that's how you figure out how to work your way out of things. Let it right. be breezy. 